This next lesson on slope focuses on a really important way of writing equations uh, for graphing straight lines. It's called slope-intercept form. So it's called slope-intercept form. And it's appropriately named because it gives us two pieces of information. It gives us the slope of the line, and we're very familiar with what slope is at this point. We've been talking about it a lot in this unit. But it also gives us something called the y-intercept. And we'll talk more about what that is shortly. Okay, but the formula for that is this formula right here, y equals mx plus b. Okay, now we should know that for any linear equation, any equation that we can graph as a straight line in a coordinate plane, that equation should have a place for us to substitute a value in for x to solve for y, or if we want to work backwards to substitute a value in for y to solve for x. So the x and the y are going to remain intact for this equation, or for this formula, okay? But what is going to get replaced with values is the m and the b. The m, we should know by now, the m from our earlier discussions is what we know to be the variable for slope, okay? And we've learned that with the slope formula from one of our recent lessons. So m represents slope. The b is a starting point. The b is a starting point, but specifically it's a starting point on the y-axis. And that is known as the y-intercept. Okay, so in our practice of graphing, we've plotted points as a starting point, and we've used the rise and run of slope to count up or down, right or left, to find other points along the line so that we can graph the straight line. This B value is going to give us a very specific starting point from which to count rise and run from to find other points. It's going to be a point that's going to be on the y-axis, so that we call that a y-intercept. So once we have that starting point, we can use our m value to count rise and run. So we know rise, we can count up or down. The run, we can count right or left. And we're going to do that counting of the rise or run from the y-intercept. Okay. So this is our starting point. This is our starting point. So we just have to get in the habit of realizing that there's a particular, there's a very specific value in this formula that allows us to plot that starting point on the y-axis and then to use what we know about slope and the rise and run of slope to count other points. So let's take this through. So we have an equation. Notice that my equation is y equals one-third x plus four. Okay, we're going to work backwards. I just always feel like the b is the easier value to figure out. So my b value, remember if I write y equals mx plus b, y equals, I'm just going to color code as I was, m x plus b, I can clearly see what value is replacing the b in that formula. So b is equal to 4. Now remember, we said up above, that is a point specifically in our coordinate plane on the y-axis. So when you think about a point on the y-axis, and let me draw a coordinate plane over here, we don't, when we plot that point, we don't move right or left. So we know that point has an x-coordinate of 0. But we do move up or down to keep us on the y-axis, okay? So for us to have a b value, a y-intercept, a starting point on the y-axis of 4, means that the ordered pair is going to be 0, 4. And that's on the y-axis, okay? The m value, our slope, is that one-third. Now that says to count as follows. So if I say, if I take that down here, m equals one third, that means we've gotten pretty good at this. That means we count a rise since it's positive one of up, matched with a run of positive three that's to the right. 
or we can work in the opposite direction so we can go down with our rise but we need to make sure we pair that pair that up with moving left for the run so this is everything i need to have to be able to graph a line so i have my starting point i'm actually just going to make a note of that information back down or actually i'll just write the equation back down. i'll write the equation back down here y equals one third x plus four I'll even trace back over it. There's the one third. That's my slope. And there's the four. Okay. So start here. More specifically, start here on the y axis. Okay. And that's going to be zero, four. So one, two, three, four on the y axis. There we go, right there. Now count our rise and run and start establishing other points. So we can count up one. We can count to the right three. Plot a point. We can count up one. We can count to the right three. Plot a point. We can count up a rise of one to the right three, a run of three. Plot another point. As we know by now, when we run out of room on the coordinate plane, we go back, and now we just go the other way. Instead of counting up, we'll count down one. And to match with that, to stay on the line, we'll now count a run of three to the left. Repeat the process. Count down one for a rise. Count three to the left for a run. One more time, count one down for the rise. Count three to the left for the run. And now we've run out of room. There are the points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points for us to accurately with a straight edge, not freehand like I'm doing here, but with a straight edge to graph our straight line. That is the line for the equation What's my equation again? Y equals one third X plus four. Well, I had it over here already, but that's the equation that has a starting point of four on the Y axis, because it's my B value. It's my B value. That has a rise and run making up the slope of one third. So we're taking what we already knew about graphing lines, coming up with a new starting point that's actually identified for us from the B value in this equation known as, don't forget, slope intercept form. And we're making use of that information to simply have a starting point and slope to graph a line. Okay, so these are your notes for today. Refer back to them as you need to because what you're going to do is to Pull the information you need from these two equations. Identify the B value, your starting point. Don't forget on the y-axis. So when that, I'll actually do that one time. So don't forget, this is going to be start here on the y-axis. And then your slope is going to be a rise over a run. And that's going to be all you need. That's going to be all you need to be able to graph this equation, okay? So graph the equation y equals 3 fifths x plus 4. Referring back to the notes on the front, referring back to this video as you need to. And graph that line. Likewise, graph this equation y equals 2x minus 3. Following the notes on the front or reviewing this video. And graph the line for y equals 2x minus 3. And we'll do more practice of this when we come to class.